So it looks like there is a bug in Chrome that allows certain individual to bypass content security policy, which is pretty dangerous. We can talk about it, guys, because the bug has been fixed and has been closed and has been installed in the latest version of Chrome. So we can publicly talk about it. So the, the fix is there, so no longer zero day. How about we talk about it, guys? We're going to discuss what is what content security policy is, what was this bug exactly, and how did this, uh, whoever discovered this, and I think uh, they're going to get a, a reward as a result, golf clap, uh, for finding great bug. I don't think personally it's a it's a it's a major big high uh, severity bug, but I'm gonna leave that decision uh, decision up to you guys. So how about we jump into it, guys? So what is content security policy? We talked about that, guys, in the uh, cross site secret scripting video. Check out the video right here. But essentially, what it is is in a given page, you can set certain policies to load images, to load uh, object, frames, scripts, to only load them from certain sources, right? And we talked about that. For example, there is a default source, there is a font, there is a frame, there is an image source. Where should your images come from? So for example, you the images that is in this page must come from this domain, and that's it, or the, the same domain, right? If, you, if, if there are images coming from other domains, please do not send get request to that URLs because it's most likely it's an XSS attack, right? The cross-site scripting. And we talked about how dangerous this is. A single image tag that not really an image, it's, it's, a, it's a get request to a slash that actually just sends your cookies, right? To that destination. So it's bad. So content security policy, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. We can set it either in the metadata, a meta tag, right and the, the page itself like uh, let me show you an example not here not here like here you can set it as part of a meta tag or as back in engineers we can set it as part of the payload headers coming back from the server so as you start building the page or building the content doesn't have to be a html page right you want to set these headers, so the content security policy headers, so that, hey, scripts from this document should only come from this, for example, or no inline, don't do a script tag, slash script tag, that's it, execute just random script. That's the worst thing you can do, right, for, for XSS. It's, it's, it's like, this is the easiest thing to, to make it for uh, people who want to inject scripts in your page, just, right? So avoid that stuff altogether. Now, let's come to the bug that has been found. The bug is actually a bypass. No matter what content policy you do, this person found a way to bypass this uh, uh, content security policy so that he, he was able to execute code that he shouldn't have be, or she, or she doesn't have to be he, right? Yeah. So let's get into it. So I'm going to warn you that it's not really easy to execute this attack because, first of all, let's go through the attack first and then uh, I'm going to explain why it's not that serious, in my opinion. So here's, here's the page that he, they, they have given. HTML, he said, no source child, no script, and no frames. So nothing should be executed, right? And uh, no inline, right? Anything co should come from uh, the, the same script. And he's here in the HTML, he's loading two scripts. Right? The first script, which is loaded from the same domain, and that's okay, right? Because we said self is okay. Script executing from the self domain is okay. So this script will be loaded. This script will be loaded. But let's look at the two scripts. The, let's look at the legit fail script. The legit fail script does this. It immediately executes a function right, with this code. He created an object, which is not no problem. You can execute any script you want, you want because those scripts, right, are, are 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 belonging in the same page technically, right? But this shouldn't be a, 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 a should not be applicable 
Why? Because you're creating an object and you're inserting the data to be a completely different URL. So he's, he's using a get command essentially to do a, a, a URL parameters and send the cookie, document cookie, which is the JavaScript code. And he's using, of course, text, obviously, the text stuff, right? So, so he can just inject that stuff. And he's just sending the cookie, assuming that this is only going to be uh, not HTTP only cookies, right? Only the JavaScript stuffy. So yeah, he's using that. So this is failing. This is failing. This is failing. All of this script is failing. Why? Because the parent page which loaded it said no object, no uh, child resource, which is the frame, and no uh, script resource, right? Uh, that is not me. So these are failing. However, look what he did. He exceeded the same code. As again, he managed to have a, another JavaScript file, which should be executed. Same domain, again. But look at this puppy. Look at all this, oh my god, convoluted stuff. Man, people are just getting smarter and smarter executing this JavaScript, man. So again, that function, no problemito. You can do this, but look what he did. He created a, just a, a beautiful big payload of a string, which is the same code that he basically wrote here. I keep saying, hey, he, okay. They, right? So they did that and they put all of that string as a payload. So to, to the JavaScript executing, it's just a, a bunch of a string, right? And now, he, uh, they, <laughs> they put that in our HTML, and then he, they used the iframe, and then did the JavaScript colon, which I used so many times back in the 90s. My God, I used this so much. Like JavaScript colon on click. I always used to do this, right? This basically execute, opens a brand new document. That's what it does, uh, uh, and, and I got this not from my ass, obviously, I was reading this. Uh, the smart people commented here, the project members, essentially. Let's give some, uh, let's give some props to people. What was his name? His name is Arthur? I think so. Arthur, but his name is not, I think his name is Arthur. So yeah, he's, uh, he's the guy who found, uh, who, who found the fix who, and fixed it, obviously. Yeah, so what the JavaScript parameter does it takes the payload which is a string and it executes the code whatever it is it just executed but when it executes it it opens a brand new blank page just like we do with the browsers like this right if i do uh let's, let's do it right here if i do javascript alert test right and i hit enter you can actually execute javascript code right right there but this actually becomes in, an, in a different page. They used that uh, flaw because it's a new page, it's a new document. It did not inherit this content security policy. So pretty much it's a blank new slate. As a result, it's a blank slate and it will basically execute all that stuff. It will execute this code and it will basically go to the malicious side, it will send the cookies. Now the question is, how did, how, did, how, did it access, how did it have access to the cookie is beyond me because it's a brand new page. I guess the brand new page will have access to that cookie. So yeah, maybe. So yeah, that's in a nutshell, that's the bug. It was fixed. That's why I was able to talk about it now. But look, look at this guys. First of all, what did, they had to do in order to execute this stuff? Well, they had to create a script and somehow inject it into my site, right? Because this is script, that bad script, you cannot inject it in the page as, as a just normal script script, right? Because it will fail, right? Because we said unsafe inline. You cannot do inline scripts, right? So they cannot do that. So they should have been able somehow to make this work. You need to upload a JavaScript file to that web server hosting this uh, content. And not only that, and 
modify, then do an XSS attack to inject a script tag that references that file you just uploaded. And you might say, how the heck can you allow people to upload JavaScript file? Well, you can have a flaw in your uploading. You allow upload images, for example, and someone could just upload a normal ping or GIF or GIF, and that GIF or GIF or image is actually a JavaScript file. But if your backend does not specify the content type of that ping file, because we don't care about extensions, right? The, the backend. Then if the browser uh, tries to sniff the content of the ping file, it can infer that the content is actually JavaScript and it will treat it as JavaScript and it will essentially execute it, right? So that's another way you can actually reference a job, uh, an image here and it will, it will work as a JavaScript file. That, that's why you have to, I talked about, this is called mime sniffing, right? And I talked about mime sniffing right here. Ch go check that video out. So that's another trick. If you're really a white hacker, white hat hacker, white hat hacker, is that, is that right? Yeah, white hacker, you can actually do all of that stuff and use, utilize all that stuff to fix your bug. That's why it's, it's a complex field. You can just go into this back in security web stuff and, and, and you can still don't know everything. Every day, man, I, I'm just amazed by how much I don't know. It's just amazing. This field is just exploding. Right, there is so much to learn, man. So yeah, uh, I wouldn't give the, this was given a medium. Personally, I wouldn't give it a medium just because of the hoops that the attacker has to go through in order to to execute this attack. But meh, I'm not a security researcher, so what do I know? All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay uh, awesome. Goodbye.